Good morning, parents. Uh, last week, we started a mini-series on the Lord's Prayer. Now, we're going to be continuing that. And we said last week that uh, the Lord's Prayer is both concise and comprehensive, that it's short, but that it really covers the whole of life. Uh, and this is very similar to the Ten Commandments. You kind of think of the Ten Commandments and the Lord's Prayer as uh, parallel passages. For in the Ten Commandments, you have the first four that are talking about our duty to God, and then in the last six, they're talking about our duty to man. And then similarly, in the Lord's Prayer, the first three petitions are about honoring the name of God. They're about the Lord. And then the last three petitions are really about us as human beings and our relationships to one another. And so this is a, a comprehensive for all of life prayer. And it really starts with the first petition that we see in Matthew chapter 6, verse 9, which is, Hallowed be your name or to let the name of God be kept holy. Uh, another way of saying it that might be more modern for us is that God's name would be honored in our life and in the lives of others, the lives of those around us. So this is our request. Uh, it's not only a request, but it's also a praise we can see. It's an, an adoration. Let God's name be holy. Hallowed be your name. And really, this is what all of life is supposed to be about. In fact, the other five petitions really flow under and fall under this one petition uh, that kind of rules them all in one sense. And so another way of saying this, another way of thinking about it is that the Father's name is glorified or hallowed when He gives us our daily bread, uh, when He forgives us of our sins. And so we pray and we ask God, Lord, would you provide all of my physical needs, all of my spiritual needs? Lord, would you forgive me of my sins and help me to forgive the sins of others? And God grants that request because it's prayed in his name. And when he grants it and gives it to us, then we say, man, God, you're awesome. And when we say, God, you're awesome and thank you and we praise him for it, what we're doing is we are hallowing the name of God. So this is the first and most important petition, hallowed be your name. And really, I think in a lot of ways, uh, this is fallen on quite hard times and, and we need to be really thoughtful and considerate of you know what does it mean to hollow the name of God well if it's the first one in the Lord's Prayer and it's the most important one uh, then we ought to spend time really thinking and meditating upon it for it has become common to really uh, dishonor the name of God unfortunately even amongst Christians I was uh, watching uh, I was reading today an article actually on Christianity Today about a new video game that's being developed called I Am Jesus Christ. And so you're playing, you're supposed to be playing as the person of Christ and, you know, doing things. And of course, there's a lot of liberty and license uh, of what Jesus can do, you know, and having your Holy Spirit meter filled, uh, filled and, and all kinds of things. And really, as it just, you know, reading about it, it's just very grieving uh, because what it's doing, among other things, is, well, it's not hollowing the name of God. It's taking the eternal Son of God and reducing him to a character in a video game, right? It's making the, you know, the glorious God into really just almost a, a one-dimensional figure, character, uh, character in a video game. And so God's name is not being honored, right? And so we want to be really thoughtful about, about this and how we honor the name of God. One uh, thing to think about here is it says, Hallowed be your name. So it's about the name of God being honored and kept holy. And really, the name of God contains all that is true about Him. Everything that is true about our God that's revealed to us in the scriptures His holiness, His kindness, His goodness, His love, His justice, His mercy, uh, even his, his righteous judgment, everything that is contained about Him that's revealed in the scriptures, we are to keep holy. So we don't want to reduce this God. We don't want to domesticate this God. Uh, we don't want to make him in our image. We want to keep him as he's revealed himself to be. And when we do that, that's how we hallow his name. Uh, we, don't even we don't want to reduce him even in terms of taking away the Father or taking away the Son or the Holy Spirit. No, this is uh, the triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. This is who he is. And when we recognize him as that, we are hallowing the name of God. 
So what we want to do then is we want to look into our own lives and into the lives of our children, and we want to say, uh, Lord, help me to honor your name. In what ways am I not honoring you? And we want to confess and repent of that. And we want to look into the lives of our children, and we want to say, in what ways are they not honoring the Lord? Maybe they're lacking wisdom. And so we pray and we say, Lord, would you please give them wisdom? And not just so they have wisdom, but so that when they receive wisdom, that we can then praise and hallow the name of God. And so, you know, we want to be thoughtful. We want to look. We want to pay attention to our own lives first and then to the lives of our children. And we want to answer this request, uh, this petition of God, hallowed be your name. Well, I hope this helps you this week. And I look forward to continuing to build faith in families. God bless. Thank you.